Hello, welcome to News Now on TV 360. I am Fidelia Aguncha. Tragedy was averted in Bernou on Thursday as four suicide bombers were intercepted before they could cause more harm. The news of the failed attacks comes just a day after five internally displaced persons were killed in an attack on a camp in Dalori Maiduguri, capital of Bernou State. Emergency officials said two female suicide bombers blew up themselves at Madadari village near the town of Konduga shortly after their attack in the IDP camp. About an hour earlier, two suicide bombers had detonated their vest outside the Dalari camp, killing themselves alone. Their attacks all came on the same day the Nigerian army announced it had destroyed a Boko Haram tactical ground camp zero in Sambiza forest. The United Nations has scaled up its pleas for funds to assist those affected by the Boko Haram insurgency. On Thursday, the UN High Commission for Refugees and its humanitarian partners launched an interagency funding appeal of $157 million for people affected by the insurgency in the Lake Chad Basin region. According to the UN and its partners, the funds will be used to provide support to some 208,000 Nigerian refugees. The agency would also provide support for 75,000 of the Nigerian refugees hosted in Niger, Cameroon and Chad. Still on the security situation, suspected herdsmen have again launched separated attacks in two Nigerian states. In Benue, seven people have been confirmed dead following an attack on Boko community in the Middle Belt state. The Benue State Commissioner of Police, Fatai Owusheni, who disclosed this while briefing newsmen in his office, said the victims were traveling out of the state when criminals attacked, killed and burned them to ashes. The fresh attacks prompted the state governor, Samuel Orton, to declare an indefinite 6 a.m. to 6 p.m. curfew in the community. Meanwhile, in Kaduna, seven persons have been reported dead in another attack on Kaguru village in Chukun local government area of the state. Several villagers are believed to have sustained injuries in the attack. Security officials is yet to comment to that attack. To find a lasting solution to the farmers' herders' crisis, Nigeria's Vice President Yemi Oshibajo on Thursday held a meeting with some state governors at the presidential villa in Abuja. The meeting, which was held behind closed doors, included governors of Adamawa, Eboin, Plateau, Kaduna, and Zamfara states. Deputy governors of Benue and Oyo states were also present at the meeting. According to Amnesty International, over 180 people have been killed by herdsmen in 2018, with Taraba, Adamawa and Benue the most affected. Oshibanjo is also the chairman of the committee set up by the National Executive Council to solve this crisis. The Nigerian Senate has called for investigations into the continued spread of Lassa fever across the country. The lawmakers during plenary session on Thursday urged the committees of health and primary health care and communicable diseases to look into the outbreak of the disease and find a lasting solution to it. The Senate also urged the federal government through the Ministry of Health to urgently provide the center all necessary equipment to enable it meet its responsibilities to Nigerians seeking medical care at the center. No fewer than 21 people have died from the disease since the recent outbreak with over 77 confirmed cases in 10 states. Barely 24 hours after its launch, former President Olusegun Obasanjo has registered with the Coalition for Nigeria Movement. The former president who registered with the movement in Ogun State said the coalition is on course to defeat the All Progressive Congress and the People's Democratic Party in 2019 nationwide. Other members of the movement include former governors Olagun Soye Oinlola of Oshun State and Donald Duke of Cross River State. The group, however, insists it is not a political party. The Independent National Electoral Commission, INEC, says it's set to commence the use of electronic process in its collation and transmission of election results. INEC Chairman Mahmoud Yakubu, in a statement signed by his Chief Press Secretary, said the Commission would begin the process with the governorship elections of Ekiti and Oshun State in July and September. He added that its success would herald the eventual usage in the 2019 general elections. In a bid to ensure speedy dispensation of justice, Lagos State Government on Thursday inaugurated four special courts solely for the prosecution of sexual offenses and corruption cases. 
Two of the courts will judge on special offenses, which are economic and financial crimes, while the other two will try sexual offenses. The Sexual Offenses Court is the first of its kind in Nigeria. The courts were inaugurated by the Chief Judge of Lagos, Okbayemi Oke. The Center for Anti-Corruption and Open Leadership, Kakao, says it is in support of President Muhammad Buhari's stance against corruption. The African Union had, in its 45th summit, selected President Buhari as the man to champion the fight against corruption on the continent. Speaking at a press briefing, the chairman of Kakao, Debo Adeniron, said the AU's endorsement of the president's anti-corruption campaign is a positive sign that the Nigerian government is heading in the right direction. I congratulate Mr. President for the continental recognition of his administration as anti-corruption crusade. Administration anti-corruption crusade. We urge Mr. President not to sleep on his earth, but to intensify a relentless and inspiring struggle against corruption in Nigeria. The importance of combating corruption can never be overemphasized as it is an avoidable drain pipe on our meager national resources, just as it castrates government from being able to deliver on the set developmental goals. It is curious to note that Mr. President professed anti-corruption program neither his party nor the governors from the same party has adopted or domesticated the policy. For the crusade to be meaningful, it cannot be a one-man presidential show. It must ricochet in several corners, even at the grassroots. It must become our national project. <laughs>
have been downloaded 7,276 times. This, the Budget Office acknowledged, is the highest in recent times, which confirms Nigerians' interest in knowing more about the workings of the 2018 budgets. Oil prices rose on Thursday after a survey showed OPEC's commitment to its supply cut remains in place, even as U.S. production tops 10 million barrels per day for the first time since 1970. Brent crude features were up 53 cents on the day at $69.42 a barrel, while U.S. crude rose 42 cents to $65.15 a barrel. Brent crude rose by 3.3 percent in January, its strongest start to the year in five years, in line with a broad rise in other risk-linked assets, such as U.S. equities, which hit record highs last month and marked their biggest January increase since 97. However, adherence by producers included in the deal to curb supply rose to 138% from 137% in December, suggesting commitment is not wavering even as oil prices hit their highest since 2014. On to the international scene now. Kenya's high court has suspended the government's shutdown of three of the country's largest private TV channels, KTN, NTV and Citizen TV, were taken off air over plans to broadcast opposition leader Raila Odinga's unofficial inauguration on Tuesday. The court has suspended the ban for 14 days while the case is heard. Odinga lost last year's election and his swearing-in was widely seen as a publicity stunt, but the authorities said it was an act of treason. Opposition groups have accused the Kenyan government of violating the public's right to information about important events. South Africa's prosecuting authority says it will decide whether to go ahead with 18 charges of corruption against President Jacob Zuma before the end of the month. The charges stem from an arms deal in the late 90s and include allegations of corruption, fraud, racketeering and money laundering. This comes as after Zuma provided argument on why he should not be criminally charged. Zuma is under increasing pressure to step down for his party or his party, the governing African National Congress, to remove him from the position of president of the country. On to sports now, President Muhammad Buhari has congratulated the home-based Super Eagles of Nigeria on their victory over Sudan in the semi-final of the 2018 Championship of African Nations. The Nigerian team beat their Sudanese opponent 1-0 and will now face host nation Morocco in the final on Sunday. President Buhari, who pledged unflinching support for the team, urged them to remain focused and determined as they go for gold in the final match on Sunday. Premier League clubs spent more than ever in the January transfer window this month with a record £430 million. The sum spent was nearly double the previous record of £225 million with a total of £150 million spent on deadline day alone. Analysts estimate spending by Premier League clubs in the 2017-2018 season to be a record £1.9 billion, surpassing last season's record of £1.4 billion. 28 Russian athletes have had their Olympic doping bans overturned and their results from the 2014 Winter Games in Sochi reinstated after their appeals were upheld by the Court of Arbitration for Sport on Thursday. The court in a statement said it had found insufficient evidence during last week's hearing in Geneva and that the 28 athletes banned by the International Olympic Committee were guilty of anti-doping violation in Sochi. However, it is not clear yet whether any of the 28 will be able to compete in the Winter Olympic in Pyeongchang, South Korea, which will start on February 9. Well, that's all on news now. Thanks for watching. I am Fidelia Agoncha.